my little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today it's going to be a knitting techniques video. And today I'm using, let me see here, these are size 10, 6.0 millimeter Clover Takumi double pointed needles. I love these, you know, for doing small swatches and things. Um, and I'm just using some Pound of Love. Not sponsored, you know, for any of this. I'm just, you know, letting you know. So basically what this tutorial is, it's about binding off. Now, traditionally, binding off, you know, when I first learned how to bind off, I was terrified. Yes, I was. Because I was so fearful that, you know, I was going to lose my stitches and I had this tremendous death grip, you know, which I'm sure I've shared this before in some of my videos. And basically it amounts to knitting off the first two stitches and then taking that first loop and then passing it over that last loop and then knitting the next one. And, you know, I mean, this, this works. Yes, this is the method that I originally learned with as far as binding off. And, you know, yeah, it works, but there are other ways. I mean, I have done a video on how to do this bind off. You know, I'm going to put that in the description box down below. And also I did, it was a super stretchy bind off. And, you know, I mean, you know, that, that's a good one too. But what if you want to do something a little bit different? You know, especially if you're doing a piece where the edge really does need to be elastic. You know, maybe you want it to be a little bit simpler, perhaps a little bit more decorative. Well, hey, we are going to crochet. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. <laughs> so I'm going to be using the same millimeter size hook, which is a six millimeter size 10 or a size J. And we are going to bind off by crocheting. And actually I've got two methods for you and they are both really simple. One of them is just for a very plain bind off and the other one is for a bit more, you know, of a decorative lacy loopy bind off. So without further ado, let's get into the good stuff, right? Right. Alrighty. So we are going to start with the basic crochet bind off and before trying this on one of your finished pieces, I would say practice. Yes, practice is always a good idea, uh, especially when you're doing finishing for any sort of piece that you've been spending a lot of time on. Practice. Yes, do a swatch first. I can't stress that enough. Um, you know, until you get used to the process and the technique. You know, you know, just a bit of a disclaimer. You know, um, so we've got our tail here, and what we're gonna do is hold it to the back. Okay. And first things first, going to insert your hook underneath the loop, you know, and be sure that you are going into that first stitch as if to knit. Okay. Keep that in mind. All right. Then grabbing your yarn. Now this helps if you are a continental knitter, I believe. You know, I mean, I always have my yarn in my right hand. Well, I need my right hand in order to use my hook. So um, another thing that might help as far as the, the tensioning to loop the yarn around your finger a couple times, me, I kind of wing it. So basically inserting your hook into your stitches and you pull up a loop like so. And then cast that stitch off of your needle, like so. And then go into the next stitch with your hook. And it can be a little bit tricky at first, especially if you are a tight stitcher, which I am. And then do the same thing. Grab your yarn, pull it through and off the needle. And then to finish, it's really the same thing 
but with a crochet hook. Basically, you're pulling this first loop through that second loop and binding it off. Like so. And then we do another one. So, going through that stitch that's on the needle. Pull the yarn through and then off the needle and then pull the loop through the loop. Next one, go into that stitch, pull the yarn through, off the needle, loop through the loop. And it even looks like a knitted edge, which is pretty cool. You know, if you're going for consistency. And then you just keep doing this exact same process all the way until you reach the end of your piece. Just pull the loop through, off the needle, loop through the loop, go into the next stitch, yarn through, loop off, loop through the loop. And of course you can experiment using different hook sizes you know, if you want to get looser, you know, and they do that, they do say the same thing uh, as far as, you know, binding off in the traditional knitting sense, you know, using a, a bigger needle size for the bind off for a looser, stretchier bind off, you know, and the reason why I'm being so slow about this is because I want you to see what I'm doing. Also because I don't have a lot of practice with this, but I thought this was a really neat technique and I wanted to share it with you guys because I'm always trying to, you know, expand my own horizons and encourage you guys to do the same thing because you might find that this works better for you. You know, personally, I find it's boring to just do the same humdrum thing over and over. You know, I, I like to try new things. It's what makes life interesting, don't you think? So basically you're just doing the same thing over and over in the same technique, and we're almost to the last stitch. You know, it would probably help if I was a, you know, a knitter that used my yarn in the left hand, but I'm a righty, you know, I, I can't help it. And then through that last one and then boom and I already cut my yarn so I'm good to go and there you go a very nice neat bind off and to show you what the difference is look at this this one was actually a knitted bind off and this is my crocheted bind off looks very similar now this one it's pretty stretchy you know it's got some give to it this one, it has a little give, but not as much. So there is, there is some more stretch to this one. So next up, I'm gonna show you a decorative, more lacy approach to the crochet bind off. All right, so for this one, it's going to be a more decorative approach, a bit more loopy and lacy, kind of like me sometimes. So I'm gonna start by inserting the hook into that first stitch, just as we had done before. And again, going to grab your yarn, the working yarn, and pull it through that loop that is still on your needle and pull it off of the needle. Then I find it's actually easier to work this process if you drop the needle. So from here, going to chain up six. Now the number's really arbitrary. You can chain up six, four, really whatever. But you know, six is a good, nice, you know, even number. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna do some slip stitches. Again, the number, it's kind of arbitrary. So I'm gonna go in purl-wise with the hook, 
and it can be a little bit tricky if you are a tight stitcher, which, yeah, I am. I admit that. You know, there we go. So through three, and then we're going to slip stitch those three. So grabbing the yarn once again, and I'm going to pull that yarn through all four loops that are on my hook. So that's through one, through two, through three, and through the last one, the fourth, and it creates a loop. So then from here, chain up six again, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then go back to the needle, and then we're going to go through three of these stitches on the needle. So through one, through two, and through three, and then pull the yarn through all four loops in a slip stitch method. Now again, I would totally stress practicing this technique on a swatch, not a project that you spent a month working on. Um, you know, this is, this is not something that you want to just jump right into. I would say practice it first, just like anything and everything. All right, so from here, we need to chain up six again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then slip through three stitches. So through one and through two and through three. Now you see I've got two left. You know what? That's okay. That is all right. You know, it does not have to be exact. So I'm going to slip stitch through all four loops. There we go. Boom. And then chain up six again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then since we only have two stitches left on our needle, well, we'll just work those. So through the one and through the two. So instead of pulling through four loops, well, we're only going to pull through three loops. That's okay. As soon as I can get this one off of there. There we go. Pull through all three loops. And shaboom. There we go. And then so you would, of course, cut your yarn. Snip, snip. And there you go. So this enables you to create a really funky, loopy, lacy edge to your piece. You know, something a little bit more pizzazz, like, you know, mm, excuse me. So this actually, I think, would be rather cool if you were doing, say, you know, a, a scarf or a shawl or something like that, and you wanted to add something a bit more decorative. Now, when you are blocking your piece, what you would do is you would put a, a pin, you know, stretching out each of these loops or every other loop or, you know, what have you. But so you would block it through these loops. That's how you would block it. All right. So with that being said, you know, you now have a couple of alternatives to the typical knitted bind off. You have a plain crochet bind off or something a bit more decorative. Now, of course, you know, with the, the crocheting bind offs, there are other alternatives as well. Naturally, I was experimenting with a double crochet bind off. You know, you could probably do, you know, shells and fans and all sorts of fun stuff. Play around with it, you know, get creative. I always say to march to the beat of your own bongo. So bongo away. <laughs> so listen, 
If you enjoyed this, you know, little tutorial, uh, you know, give a little thumbs up button down below because you know I appreciate your appreciation. And also, please hit subscribe because I do try to post often, whether it's knitting or crocheting or a mix of the two, audiobook narrations, and my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games. Lots of links in the description box down below. And uh, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay stitching, and above all, no, I messed that up. <laughs> stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. Oh, I think I need more caffeine. Anyway, you guys have a great, great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.